The Crosby conundrum begins right now on Barber Dave's Shaves and Such. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Barber Dave Shaves and Such for a Sunday, and we're beginning a very, very special five shave series every Sunday in June. My, my good buddy Steve Crosby, better known as Heisai, over on the Shaving Cadre, came up with a plan where he said, hey, I'm going to give up a, a theme for you on a Friday, and you've got to try to do whatever you can to make the theme work, whether that be costumes, whether that be matchy matchy shaves so we did our best today uh, believe it or not i do have a lot of lemony type soaps but they're usually combined with um, lavender or some other uh, types of um, fragrances so i didn't really think that matched so when i was going through everything and i unfortunately steve and i apologize i do not have the hot dog stand uh hat however uh, i remember back in the early 80s or actually late 70s, early 80s, when they were really big in the mall, there was this one girl that worked at the Park Mall, and I didn't realize they had a platform behind the counter, but she looked like she was about nine feet tall. Then you had that big, stupid, goofy, uh, yellow, blue, and red hat on top of it. But they had the best corn dogs and the best lemonade. I did not do lemonade today. I apologize. We're just getting started. Things will get better. But here's what I picked. The, I picked the most lemony soap that I have. And this thing screams pure lemons. So the soap today is going to be CBL's Litsia Kubeba. Now, it's not lemon. It's a plant, but it is the most lemon of a non-lemon plant. And as you can see, to be in the lemony theme, I am wearing a yellow shirt, lemon shirt. And I'm also wearing, uh, to be matchy-matchy, my Bruce Lee Seiko 5 limited edition and uh, with the lemony type band. Um, my friend Heisai is also a huge beer lover, so I didn't have a lemon-colored brush like a lemon drop from Paladin or anything like that. So what I did is I thought I'd give a tribute to him with my Chiseled Hound beer brush, because he loves beer, and, you know, beer's got kind of a lemony look to it. So that's what we're using for our brush today. We'll get into all the other stuff um, a little bit later. Oh, and for the razor... Uh, the closest thing I had to a lemony style razor, which is a wonderful razor, razor is a Genco Easy Aces with a lemon type uh, scale. So we'll see how this goes. I do have one surprise uh, that was contributed to me by my lovely wife. And uh, I think you guys will get a kick out of it because it screams 1970s. It screams your local drugstore, and it screams cheap. But we'll get to that. And it is a feminine product, so <laughs> we'll say, Well, it's not, let me put it this way. I shouldn't say feminine product because I know the word douche is probably going around some of your heads. No, that's not what it is. However, it is. it was sold as a... Um, a ladies type product uh, for after bath. And you guys will recognize it if you are a certain age. Um, but it is it screams lemons, screams lemons. So we'll go over that as well. So how did this all come about? Well, as I said earlier, Steve came to me and said, hey, why don't we try this? So we're gonna do that. New graphics, new stuff. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this as it'll be a five part series. And this is the type of stuff I love. You know, I, I know that some of you have written in and said, hey, try this, try that. Give us your advice on this. But I like these type of challenges because it makes me go through the soap locker and the razor locker and the brush locker. And it makes me bring out stuff that, that I don't normally use all the time. Because, you know, you get into a habit, especially during the work week. You know, you shave as quick as you can to get out the door. And then on the weekends, especially if I'm doing videos, I'm trying to uh, find stuff that I really like. And speaking of that, if you like the content that you see and you enjoy this, don't forget to come and see us at www.theshavingcadre.com. We do feel that we are the finest uh, shaving and gentlemanly pursuit forum on the interwebs. No moderation. 
come and be who you are as long as you play nice. Um, also, if you like conversation, come and see Drinks and Daves, Tuesday nights, 6 p.m. Pacific on our Drinks and Daves YouTube channel. And the subject this week is the Daves complain, like we always do anyways. Uh, the razor has been stropped uh, 50 and 50 on uh, leather and linen. Uh, this soap, this Litzia Kubeba, um, I think is one of CBL's finest. Uh, it screams lemons. That's, I mean, it's just lemon, 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 lemon. So, all right, let's see what happens here. But I wanted to keep kind of a lemon style theme. That's why the shirt and the watch. And as a tribute to Stephen, the beer, the beer brush. Now we'll see how he likes it. In other news, for those of you that are members of the cadre, and hopefully those of you that are planning on joining the cadre, we are hoping to have TSC Con 2025 on the high seas. So there's a, a thread to gauge interest on the web, on the uh, forum to do a cruise. Now we do need to have a minimum of 30 people. So if it's something you'd like to join us for, please get signed up because otherwise we'll probably default to some of our other things. I mentioned yesterday that for a couple of days during the week that I was trying to do two pass shaves because there's been some commentary on the various channels that uh, a two-pass shave is sufficient enough to uh, to get a good shave. Well, and that may be true for some, but I found that uh, by the end of the day, I had some stubble, even though you can't see my stubble because it's gray, um, but it felt uncomfortable. It didn't give me that true DSBBS shave that I shoot for, and I know there's a lot of people that say, you know, why chase uh, BBS if you're opening yourself for irritation. Well, my comment on that is that if you are doing it correctly and you are doing it right, uh, with the right touch, the right feel, the right pressure, you shouldn't have any irritation at all, in my opinion. Um, so a three pass shave is worth it. Um, uh, getting back to the lemons, the theme of the, uh, conundrum today is this stuff just it just fills the room with that lemony goodness. And since Stephen and I both live in extremely hot climates in the summer, Um, this was a perfect theme to open up the series. And all these come from the mind of Mr. Crosby. So, and I'm sure he started out fairly mellow and they're going to get crazy er as we go along.
those of you that watch my channel a lot may have noticed two things already in this shave that I avoided disaster. When I was doing uh, the shave on the other side of my face, I skipped. Luckily, I backed off and was able to re-engage. And just now, I bumped this hand up against the razor, which could have been another disaster. So always know your situational awareness. And speaking of hot weather, we're in June, so we're typically going to see temperatures above 100 for, quite frankly, the foreseeable future. Um, probably until August, uh, we'll be seeing daily temperatures in the uh, hundreds, at least through July 4th, when our monsoon traditionally starts, although... The meteorological community has decided that the monsoon actually starts on June 15th, but we never get any rain till after July. So who knows what they're doing there. And really all the monsoon is just a weather pattern change. It's not meaning we're gonna get a ton of rain. And because of La Nina in the Pacific, uh, hurricanes are gonna be nuts, but we're not gonna see a lot of uh, rain, or we will, but it'll be later on. So, um, Next week, starting on Thursday, we are under a heat warning. And what that heat warning is, and that's changed over time. I mean, when I was a kid, you never heard of heat warnings or first alerts or, you know, oh God, we're going to die type temperatures. And they were always the same. I mean, temperatures, you know, and I'm not going to get into the whole global warming thing, but we've had these temperatures all the time. Um, but temperatures are supposed to be between 105 and 111 in the valley will be a little bit cooler but my honest opinion is once you get to a hundred you really don't know the difference sadly um but yeah so you know all of a sudden you know to get ratings i guess or to you know everything's a crisis uh we've got a heat warning from the national weather service on thursday now, what's funny is in June, a lot of times, like right now, it's beautiful. It'll get to be in the low 100s during the day, but the nights will cool off to the mid to high 60s, and it's beautiful. Well, once we get into June, um, you know, we'll be 95 degrees at 10 o'clock, you know. And then once we get into July, you start adding humidity, because right now, even though it's over 100, our humidities are 1% to 2%, which, you know, is good for heat, but it's bad for wildfires. And we've got a ton of wildfires already going right now. But come uh, July, that looks like I caught myself. Uh, come July, uh, you add the humidity, and then come August, it's just flat out miserable. 30, 30 to 50% humidity and temperatures in the hundreds. That's why you'll see people in my location where Stephen lives uh, standing outside at 3 o'clock in the afternoon watching the thunderstorms build and hoping that it dumps like crazy on your house to cool everything off. Because once the monsoon hits, it can it can cool off 30 degrees easy. A little bit of cleanup today. And it did look like I caught myself on my lip, or on my chin, a little. So, you know, it's just the trade-off that we have for having some of the most beautiful winter weather on the planet. So, and I know you folks in the Midwest, when I say 30 to 50% humidity, you're laughing because I've spent some summers in the Midwest and it's miserable too. I would rather have 100 plus degree weather and 20 to 30% humidity than um, 
95 degrees and 85% humidity because it is oppressive. But our, you know, it's just the trade-off. And I know those of you that live in northern latitudes are dealing with beautiful summers usually where it can get hot though, but you have to deal with very cold, miserable winters. So frankly, I'll take the heat. All right, let's see how we did. The um, with that secret uh, that secret stuff that I used post shower because I didn't think that you would want me to um, demonstrate how I used a post bath wash or a post bath. Uh, elixir. Uh, yeah, yeah, you don't want that. Um, but that in combination with the uh, the Litsia Kubeba is just a lemon bomb right now. A uh, little bit of sting on the alum, not too bad. Let me get cleaned up here and we'll uh, go from there. A lot of people have asked about this uh, Chisel and Hound uh, beer brush. I'm not sure if he still makes. He he started to make these as a uh, limited edition. I don't know if he's still making them or not. I think you can still order them. But a lot of people say because of the fl fluted beer glass, is it hard to use? Nah, not at all. It's In fact, it's fun to use. And what's cool, and you don't see it, obviously, but what's cool about this brush is it comes with a little coaster, which I think is neat, and... Um, it's just a fun, it's a fun brush all the way around. And again, we used Litsia Kubeba for the shaving soap by CBL. Fantastic soap. Okay, and for our witch hazel today, let me rinse off the elm. Because we wanted to go explosively lemon today. So believe it or not, I'm going to use two witch hazels. The standard Thayer's Lemon, to stick with the theme. To just add more lemons to the lemon. Of course, the lemon watch. And we're also going to use CBL's Litsia Kubeba Witch Hazel, which adds even another layer of lemon. We'll let that dry down a little bit. Then, before we do our after, well, actually, I'll do it after. I'll do it after the powder. How's that? I'll use it as a, because uh, I've already used it as an after bath spray, or not spray, but after bath spa experience. Uh, and then for our aftershave, which is an aftershave milk, we're going to be using CBL, Litsia Kubeba. This um, this is potent. I don't use very much because it does, and I think because of the concentration of the fragrance, I've got to be careful because it does light me up a little bit. Um, but that's my fault. It's it's the sensitivity that I have. Um, but uh, that. So let's do some talc real quick, and then we'll put on the secret sauce, as they say. So I hope, Stephen, I hope this was lemony enough for you. And I did pick a, a, a French EDT that is all lemon. I do not have a lemon flavored talc, but Clubman is neutral enough to, to use. Ooh, ghosty. Okay, so last night when Avocado Queen and I were talking about this uh, thing that this journey that Steve said he was going to put me on, she goes, hey, I've got something that's been around for a thousand years. Um, everybody gets it in their stocking when they're a, a woman. And basically, those of you of a certain age will remember, you ready? Jean Nate After Bath Splash. It's lemon. 
Now, here's the thing. It's meant to be splashed on because look at the size of that thing and look at the size of this bottle. This bottle is like 750 milliliters. But when you splash it on, I'm using it as an aftershave. So, yes, I am in touch with my feminine side. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Jean Nate. Or I guess I, I guess you could probably say, hey, everybody, this is Jean Nate. Uh, the female version of the of the after uh, bath splash would be Jean Nate. The guys would say, "Hey, Jean Nate, come on over. Let's get some lemon on." Okay, anyways, there is a song that uh, I was going to put on here, but it's probably copyrighted, and you can listen to it. And it's called "The Lemon Song" by Led Zeppelin. And there is some some uh, lyrics in there, um, but we won't go there because it's uh, not appropriate. Okay, so that's it for all the lemony stuff, except for the Occitan Cedrat. This is basically, if you were to take a lemon cream pie and spread this on you, that's what you're going to get. A creamy, uh, you know how, uh, those of you that know the, the taste and the feeling of... Uh, um, key lime pie. Well, this would be like key lemon pie. Uh, just absolutely wonderful. Okay, guys, there's the shave for today. That is the very first uh, episode of the Crosby Conundrum. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. And again, come see us at www.theshavingcadre.com. And this week, the Daves complain at Drinks and Daves. Have a wonderful Sunday, everybody. We'll see you again really, really soon. Take care.